How about Vince Vaughn doing the Golden Girls theme song? Um, uh, thank you for being a friend. Uh, down the road and back again. <laughs> Life is true. You're a pal. You're a confidant. <laughs> and let me just say this right now. If I threw a party and invited everyone I knew, there would be a card. Wait, was, uh, 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 wait, what? There would be uh, something addressed to me. Thank you uh, for being a friend. <laughs> He's like, I don't. <laughs> hey, it's Herbert. Mm-hmm. And you're listening to the About Last Night podcast, you slippery little son of a bitch. Hey guys, Adam Ray here, coming to you live from my buddy's daughter's art room. Uh, she's a beast. Look at all these paintings. Look at these balloons. Uh, we got a brand new episode of the About Last Night podcast out right now. That's why you're watching this. Subscribe right here, YouTube. Get all the clips, episodes. Got a lot of bangers coming up. Speaking of bangers, Jonathan Kite returns to the podcast today for his 25th appearance. Uh, we laugh till we cried, like we do every time. Impressions galore. We got deep on a few topics. Uh, It's a blast, top to bottom. Enjoy it. You know what it is. Follow John Kite on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok uh, at, uh, well, right here. We'll put it all up right here. Uh, Follow me, Adam Ray Comedy, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Read the Room, the special re-released on YouTube. Dates for the new special will be released soon. Check them out, adamraycomedy.com for all the tour dates. Thanks to everybody in Atlanta that came out to the punchline. Thanks to the Mariners for making my dreams come true and putting me in the booth during the Braves-Mariners game. Uh, Shout out to Rick Riz, Aaron Goldsmith, Dave Sims, uh, Gary Hill Jr., Taylor Trammell for coming out to the show and supporting. Uh, Triple Door, June 17th. First show is sold out. Second show has some tickets left. June 17th in Seattle, Washington. Come out and see your boy. Uh, And we got Reno, Sacramento, San Diego. Portland, Seattle, Dallas, Arizona, Fort Lauderdale, Colorado, uh, and so many shows coming up. AdamRayComedy.com for all the ticket info. Of course, uh, Adam Ray merch at AdamRayComedy.com. Some new stuff coming your way. Check the site. Follow me on YouTube. Um, I think that's it. I think that's it. Oh, June 6th, Comedy Store, Main Room, Adam Ray and Buddies. So far, Bill Burr, Kevin Nealon, Brett Goldstein from Ted Lasso. Tickets at ComedyStore.com. I'll see you there. And I'll see you now for a new episode of the About Last Night podcast with me, Jonathan Kite. I uh, was talking about this yesterday that that Trump was the only guy who like never heard of a microphone before mm-hmm. because like when Obama or the rest of those guys are they're right on mic they're talking and they're on brand yeah. whereas Trump would be walking around and, and in a stadium and just being like let me tell you yeah there's so much yelling yeah yeah the- and, and it's like the mic is right there <laughs> but and so he like he changed his voice when someone just be like no no this is what this is for. Because he talks so much. Oh, when he's right. Trying, when yeah. The mic is right there and he's having yeah, yeah, I haven't heard him yell in a while. No, because but at the rallies, but the mic is so loud. Mm. You've never seen anybody else yell at those rallies yeah. like him. Yeah. Also, I mean, he was probably feeding off the uh, the crowd's energy. And then, well, I was going to say the Nazi symbols, but the crowd's energy for sure. I agree with you. <laughs> Do you think, by the way, it's so crazy that at some point you go, like, think of the first time a black guy called you the N word. Yep. Awesome. Yep. Um, I wonder if Trump has the same. Stay with me. The same feeling when, like, an, <laughs> when, like, when the these uh, neo Nazis are like, "That's our guy." Yeah, hundred. Well, he backed them by saying, "There's very fine people on both sides." Yeah, so crazy. He's letting them slightly know, I- "I'm interested." <laughs> hey, 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 white nationalists, you up? <laughs> Yeah, that's almost like, um, I guess, what's the basketball free agent version of that? Somebody tweeting, like, or I guess unfollowing their team on Instagram. It's yeah. It's like a popular move. He unfollowed black people. <laughs> <laughs> people and the account. In the movie, You People. You People. <laughs> he unfollowed Africa. Why was I following this shithole country? <laughs> this shithole account. Oh, my God. Um, You're right, though. He, he, he suddenly, yeah, he was giving nods he was flirting all the time it's funny too that as a president you look at like reagan being an actor first right yeah like has anyone gone from and trump being a tv personality and game show host first but like has anybody 
been in politics so hard and then tried to I mean obviously um uh not Huckabee Sanders who was the other ghoul that um Trump's uh, that went on Dancing with the Stars Sean um the most McCarthy Spicer. Spicer not that he was trying to get a career in acting but like I guess I'm trying to think of anyone politically that's I see him at auditions for like, a time that's what I'm saying like if Biden or if Trump all of a sudden like truly was like getting in wanted to resurrect I guess he wasn't a lot of movies but like go back to that and really just say fuck with politics and just wanting to start popping up and like I'd love to be on I heard they're bringing back Frazier I listen I'd and love I, to be a guest star I'd love to be Eddie the dog <laughs> rough 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 bark bark lick nuts and I, <laughs> He's I don't know to get- what to do with my tossed salad and scrambled eggs. He's, we don't need you to, uh, Mr. Trump, we don't need you to sing the theme song. <laughs> We're good on that. You're just here for a general. Yeah. They- <laughs> you know, he's, he's just trying to get on the laps of the women. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't even think that guy's capable of laughing at a sitcom. I've never seen him laugh in my life. I don't think he's laughed, cried, or cummed. We'll be right back. We'll keep it right here. In a bucket of chicken. <laughs> <laughs> if he did, ev- all of that has to do with a bucket of chicken. <laughs> He, I can't believe that he didn't get his face on the side of KFC. How come? No, I'm. Oh, I'm, I, I'm oh. here to ask why. Oh, because of just being such a the strong spokes- advocate. Well, he's just always has his hand in a bucket. I know. Have you ever had the uh, the the Pat Oswalt called it the sadness bowl in a? Oh yeah, with the uh, with the with the. Uh, the the mashed potatoes. It's like, smash, it's like everything. They just took all the scraps and shoved it in. I guess what is the what's like the most gluttonous thing you've like? Last night I got as baked as I think I've been in a long time. My buddy's in town. Nice. We um we just smoked and smoked and smoked and like to the point to where I was like, oh I I'm stupider now. Yeah. Even right there. I couldn't think of what I wanted to say. I think it's affected my brain. We didn't take a station break. Did <laughs> be like, did this go out? Right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and and I and I got the munchies, but I I didn't go too crazy. Oh, I when I smoked weed, I always went too crazy. Yeah. I would have eaten this can like a goat. <laughs> I would have tin canned it. <laughs> but can I tell you, I went what I used to do in college. Um, this is uh, I feel like I'm I'm admitting a dark secret. So I would go down. I would leave the party. Like a like a shadowy figure, mm. people would just turn like where's kite. I'd really ninja out, and then suddenly I would be there again, like sitting on the couch with a sack of junk food, like like the weight you like know you like put Indiana a bunch of Jones. snacks in a pillowcase oh, yeah. like a grab bag. Yeah, like like I you know how like when he has to like figure out like what will you know uh, uh, with the glasses. No, no, no. At the beginning, the sandbag. Oh of yeah, Raiders of the Lost Ark. What does he say? Um, uh, I think that's it. <laughs> He just kind of goes. That feels. Imagine him in in an office trying to find like breast implants. I was just going to say he feels like a guy who's in the changing room at Victoria's Secret. He's fitting people for for bras. Wait a minute. You feel like a D in that one, but a C in this one. This is a C plus. He's got lopsided titties. All right. (laughs) I'm feeling your sandbags. And he and he, but I would do that with a sack of candy, and I would just sit there like Gollum, and I would finish. So candies are candy, chips, so salty, sweet, eating my feelings, yeah, all of it, yeah. And I would just and I would go through an entire bag at a party, but I wouldn't. Oh, share. so publicly too? Oh, oh, cool, yeah. I got beyond <laughs> the point of giving a fuck <laughs> what people. So thought. people are just watching you chat. I would down. do it in public. Yeah, it's like it's like. Um, well, that's how high and hungry you are. You just you're like I can't wait to get home, and it's here. But the funny thing is, I would go back to the party. I would go to the corner store. And come back to the party and hang out, but not really give anything to the party. I wasn't contributing. No, no yeah. Oh, just weird smells. <laughs> that guy just ate 60 now and later. <laughs> Who is that? I counted. <laughs> I thought there's no way he'll get to 58. I, I thought he'd eat them all later. He ate them, he ate them now. now. I, there's no such thing as a now and later for me. It's just now. If you had to I've be never sp- even heard of the second part of that candy. If you had to be sponsored by a candy at that time, what would it have been? Like uh, if they, like who, if, who, if, what candy could approach you to where you're like, I don't even care the amount. I'll sign just for brand recognition. Haribo. The gummy bears. I thought it was Haribo. Well, in my country, we say Haribo. <laughs> I'm not from Japan, <laughs> where it's uh, Haribo. Oh, right. okay. I don't know. In America, uh, yeah, it yeah. might be Haribo. It's, I have no idea. I don't even know why I thought it was Haribo. I don't think I've ever heard it pronounced. No. When I was going to say, have you seen the commercials, or have you, have you heard somebody pronounce it? 
It's just the dancing gummy bears. It's so good. Yeah. The, the, the sugar-free ones, though, make you crap your pants. They do? Yeah. Well, all gummies make you shit. Well, but these instantly. Yeah. If you finish a bag of them, there was the Amazon reviews. They had to take them off the market. They made you fill a diaper almost instantly. <laughs> it was like a double dare physical challenge. Do you remember It's Amazing? Find a flag. <laughs> Do you remember the It's Amazing fruit uh, gummies? The theme no. song was like, it's amazing fruit, amazing fruit. <laughs> how, how close did you get to the job? <laughs> I never got Dude, I never I, I, I always tell our agent I'm like, I'll do jingles. Oh my god. I'm sending her jingles do. I'm not auditioning for. That's all I want to do. All right. Here's uh here's Tom Hanks auditioning for the new Kit Kat uh jingle. Uh oh! <laughs> Give me a break! Give me a break! Come on! Give me a break! I've had a hard day. <laughs> I've had a hard day. Break me off of what? <laughs> A Kit Kat bar. Okay, okay. We'll call you back. Jeff Bridges? Uh, wait, all right. Uh, let me get a beat. After a long day of smoking weed and talking to cacti, I need a wafer chocolate covered candy that hits the spot. I'm asking don't you break me off of that piece of that Kit Kat bar, man. <laughs> He's begging in the spot. <laughs> by the way, you sounded great by the way. <laughs> you got called back, and I don't think he did. They didn't know how much they needed Michael Winslow in that spot from Police Academy. <laughs> oh, man. I did a weed show with that guy about two oh, years ago. no way. And the sound was so bad, but he was so... Uh, I was like, dude, you in Spaceballs is like to me one of the most iconic scenes in Rick Moranis movie history. It's unbelievable. Yeah, he still does it. He still travels. Yeah, I was. We were trying to set up a tour of Pablo Francisco, myself and him. Oh wow! And it was just called Sounds Funny. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, did you do a lot of aside from impressions, but like sound effect stuff? You tell me. <laughs> Is that an owl turning on a vacuum cleaner? It was a gremlin fax machine. <laughs> Don't get it wet. Because then you'll have too many of them. Oh, and I thought you'll <laughs> electrocute yourself. <laughs> oh, we haven't got, yeah. That was in the lawsuit, but it was later on. Oh, my God. Wait. Do a gremlin. D do Wait. Do, do. Okay. Here's Christopher Walken with his gremlin white noise machine. Hi, sharks. Guys. My mind is always <laughs> racing. It's like a bunch of cocaine bears fighting for dominance in Christopher Walken Mountain Town. The only way I can ever fall asleep is with gizmo white noise. Let's listen to a few of the options. Night, night, Billy. That's one of my favorites. Here's number two. That's him in the bath. He's getting real clean, which is a problematic because they multiply, which is why I always Febreze them. That's it. <laughs> That's. I didn't know you could do those noises. Not really. What the fuck? The, the one that I can do that never works on stage that is speak and spell. Do you remember speak and spell? Oh, yeah. I at um ray. I am ear. A T A M R A Y at um ray. It's my friend. Oh, my God. Yeah. If you ever. <laughs> if I ever wake up and you're doing that over my head. Wake up. I'm <laughs> the cops are coming. We at. <laughs> We That's a great to, character. We There's have to flush the stash. <laughs> Wait, here's speak and spell coming too quick on a first date. <laughs> I really like you. Am I crazy? But <laughs> ow, 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 ow. Wow. You really turned me on more than I thought. Oh, uh, I'm still going. <laughs> oh, shit. Somebody unplug me. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, that's not really. They don't have those anymore, dude. They were they were only around for like two years. Twenty years ago, that'd be. Can we get a, can we get a time machine real quick. <laughs> oh man, time machine comedy. <laughs> I'm like, guys, you guys remember Plato, right? <laughs> yeah. And then I was trying to remember the the, the Plato Fun Factory when you would like shove. Oh yeah. Through, I was trying to explain that to somebody the other day, and they were like, "What is this?" Well, then they had like Play-Doh. They were like, "Pretend you're making ice cream," and they like you do like a frozen yogurt Play-Doh thing. But kids are such fucking idiots. idiots. Also, they made it look just enough like actual ice cream. A lot of kids were eating Play-Doh. Oh, I knew six to twelve kids in my class that were eating Play-Doh without any sort of regard for their bodies. No, my and they, that stuff you don't pass. And even as a fat kid, I was like, guys, you know that's not bad for you. And you're talking to a kid who will eat anything. No, it is bad for you. You said it's not bad for you. Oh, it is bad for you. (laughs) Were you selling the fun factories? Guys, how much could it hurt? This is food that is for you, not for mom and dad. Trust trust the fat kid. Trust the kid with tits. (laughs) You think I got these from not eating Play-Doh? Bro, you're on the box. (laughs) I would always look at those fat kids in like juice commercials or there was never a fat kid in like a it was always in snack commercials or even in the race car like hot wheels it was never a fat kid they just assumed like he would run out of breath just watching the cars go do laps because he was just like any sort of fast movement they're like he's gonna get tired Uh, it was and they couldn't run inside to open a fridge because you'd have to show the kid it was like (sighs) there was nick cage (laughs) wait here's nick cage going in after playing basketball to get some sunny d Oh, wow. Good game, Trevor. Oh, let's see. what Did your mom have any drinks for us? Wow, purple stuff. No. Wow, what's that orange drink? Sunny D. Fuck yeah! That I'll drink that whole fucking thing in 60 seconds. He's Where's an your adult. Mom? Where's your- <laughs> He's just an adult hanging out with kids. Yeah, why'd you pour three glasses, Nick? They're all for me. Want a shot? Yeah. Hey, you, <laughs> you take that purple shit. What was the purple shit? Grape was, juice? No, no, it was like purple drink. Oh god, it wasn't. It was the whole Chappelle bit. Oh, that's right, grape drink. Yeah, yeah. But it, was, it wasn't. And even, then what did he say? The one black that kid black in the back was like, going, "I want that purple mm, I want stuff." That purple drink. <laughs> oh my god! You know what's funny? The the kids look like in the, in all those commercials. They look like they were pedophile approved. Oh, yeah. All of the kids in every... Like, you're telling me the fat kid's not even in the junk food? You're not in a Gushers commercial? And the fat kid was always like... There was the fat kid from Little Rascals that did, like, the Welches. But it was like, fat kids ain't drinking Welches. No, dude. Like, and to be honest, I don't know who was drinking Welches. I mean, I I guess treat... I was more of a treetop apple juice kid. Oh, we didn't have that kind of money growing up. <sighs> um, you don't need that. What, we, you, you mean a dollar... You mean a dollar twenty for, for a case of it? I was a Welches kid. Oh, okay. Bro, we had the can- Well, it just was, it was all, I mean, no, it was, this is like saying, like, I was a Campbell's kid. I was a SpaghettiOs kid. Welch's spelled with two E's. Oh, yeah. Off-brand Welch's. Wilch's. <laughs> is Wilch's. It's from, it's from USSR back then. Oh, God. We have to get rid of Wilch's. <laughs> it was the only um, sugar drink that had an expiration date yeah. on it. Oh, yeah, because oh, yeah, none of them. You had oh, to put them in the freezer immediately. Oh, bro, that was... That is the best part about like getting like a SpaghettiOs or a Campbell soup. It's like you buy one right now on what is it, April twenty sixth, twenty twenty three. It expires April twenty sixth, twenty eighty three. I was just gonna say you pass that down. That's generational wealth. <laughs> yeah, dude. Can you that's, imagine that's how did Christopher Walken not do that for the for the ad for um like the watch from uh, um Pulp Fiction, where he's just giving the kid. He goes, "Your father, I I held this in my ass." <laughs> The whole time. Chef Boyardee. <laughs> Beefaroni. Beefaroni. I'd wash it off first. Is that the slogan? <laughs> <laughs> you, you can smuggle this anywhere. I would pay. <laughs> it's a Plato Fun Factory. <laughs> I would pay top dollar to see Christopher Walken as Chef Boyardee. I've been trying to figure out a way to get the Chef Boyardee a movie made about him because there's like just enough facts out there about him, but there's not enough. There's so much opportunity for like creative liberties Dude, to I just like Googled make him a too. yeah. That's crazy. It's just like there's the bare men, but he's a real guy. Yeah, but it's just like in the same way that like Mario Lopez did the KFC Colonel like Lifetime movie. Remember, I don't even watch it, but it was just like it was a weird. Trump was like, it should have been me. Yeah, <laughs> it should have been me instead of sexy Lopez. <laughs> Uh, what does Mario Lopez do to your body when you see him, Don? 
Uh, it makes my, it makes me go inside like a turtle. Oh, so a reverse boner. A reverse boner, because I only like women, hairy, <laughs> Russian women, <laughs> and if they don't have a penis to pee on me, I'm not interested. <laughs> I made that very clear. I love cock urine. <laughs> what? By the way, where is he being interviewed right now? Don Lemon is like, I'm going to get this scoop. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man. You, yeah. yeah. You think Don Lemon's going to do a podcast now? Dude, well, crazy. So, so the, I mean, nobody's off limits from getting canned. The Tucker Carlson stuff I get, but like. Well, you know what's funny is I think the Don Lemon thing was coming for a long time. Mm. Like, because he had said that comment about how women age out. He's oh, like, really? past their prime at 40. Oh. He said that live on the air. Oh, God. He, 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 talk about time machine. Jesus. He's like, wait, what year is it? In 1989, he would have been a hero. <laughs> he said women have an expiration date? It, yeah, he goes, they're past their prime. <sighs> like at 40. Oh, God, yeah, what? Dude. <laughs> My mom's 74, she's crushing it. But also, he's black. Black don't crack. Yeah, dude. He. How old are you? Don Lemon, by the way, looks good. Yeah. By the bro. way, Tyler Perry looks great for a woman. Yeah. Medea? Yeah. Killing it. Unreal. Gorgeous. There's definitely... He just reminded me of when Brad dressed up as a woman. I, we sent Brent Moore and this pic to him live on the podcast about six years ago. And we go, would you, if you were drunk enough and you were looking to hook up with a little person, would you? And Brad was like, and Brent was like, yeah, yeah, fuck it, she's cute. And we were like, that's Brad. But we, this is before Facetune. Oh, yeah. So it was like, he, he literally just texts you back, I'm on my way. <laughs> like the shorthand text. He's like, drop a pin. All right. Oh, <laughs> my God. What would, would you, have you ever been with a little person? No, but yeah. I heard Brad's new stuff. We were all obviously doing the Austin. Yeah, yeah. Were, it's so crazy. I, I wanted you to come do the show. I thought you had a show, which you did. I was going to ask you and Brad to do oh, the show. Oh, cool. But I just assumed, because every time I'm so seeing we just you, had that you festival had shows, yeah. festival shows. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm glad that worked out. But then I got a text, and they were like, I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, you yeah, were the first great. person I, people I thought of. Oh, that was great, yeah. Yeah. Um, and Brad only does five. I mean, everyone else does ten. Yeah. But... um. <laughs> We'll cut to a picture of Brad. Yeah. You know Brad. He was just on here. Yeah, he's right here. Um, <laughs> I, but I listen his his the new stuff he's doing. Oh yeah, it's so good. So he, crushing. So, but you haven't been with a little person. Ever. No, have you? No, but I um, and I don't think I, Brad and I have talked about this. Yeah, it's not that I. Well, now I'm married, but I was just gonna say, <laughs> yeah, Amanda's like behind the curtain. That's the that's the only one. She goes, she's like she's like, look, I get Momoa, whoever. You can have any little person because it doesn't. I would wonder. They Bre don't count. You're like, what? <laughs> yeah. Amanda. Oh, my God. I just was I had to rehash with my nieces when we left. They were like, uh, went to New York for the first time. My folks took them out there and they went and saw Wicked. And I was like, you guys remember when I took you to see Annie, the musical? And it was Black Annie. And they wanted to leave it intermission. And they said, they were just like, they were like, can we go? And I was like, yeah. And they were just like, yeah, we're just tired and we're just over it. And I was like, all right, cool. And then we get in the car and I there was like a beat and I go, hey, just to be clear and make sure we're on the same page, you guys didn't have any problem with Black Annie, right? And they're like, no. And I was like, okay. Just making sure that's not why we were leaving. And they're wow. like, yeah, we were tired. And I was like, yeah, you guys were just seemed like you were faking being tired. So I was like. How old? I met them, but how, how old? They're 13 remember. now. This was probably when they were like nine. Oh, I was like, I, I'm imagining him as little kids just being secretly racist. Oh, yeah, well, that's, yeah, and I was like, what could they have said? Like, no, no, we're fine with it. We just, you know. We just didn't believe the performances. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That, guy, that woman could barely hit those notes. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, it and was what, more was that, that a little person? <laughs> <laughs> like, Jesus, how deep is this fucking conversation going? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but you were saying you took him to well, New York. Well, there's a, well, so they took him out there, and but yeah. I was thinking about, like Jim Jeffries, I think went with Brad to a little person convention once, and I think hooked awesome. up with a few little people. Is I think what the rumor was at the was. same time. I'm sure it was a real Gulliver's Travels. <sighs> he just laid on the bed, and there was a thousand around oh, him, yeah. just tying him down. I don't know plowing it, his field. It's too. <laughs> it's too. Um, yeah, it's it. I don't know. I don't know if I could get past the true. Um, <laughs> so, so, I'm, wait, I'm this, waiting for like the, this is dead. <laughs> Where are you going with this? I just like, no, yeah, no. I don't know. It's also just a straight attraction thing, you know? I, I I mean, I'm trying to think of like, besides Brad, who obviously I see quite often and love very much. Yeah, you hook up with Brad, no problem. Yeah, yeah. that's what I was just going to yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, Because I know him. Yeah. <laughs> you know? need rapport. Bro, and the inside, he's a full person. Yeah. But I know, I met a friend of Brad's once um, that was, uh, as Brad calls him, uh, 
what is he called? Normies? Or no, Reachers is what he calls tall people. That was How strict- was Jack Reacher? Well, that's why Tom Cruise was so short. <laughs> yeah. Because in the book, he's a huge man, you know? Oh, yeah. But when, when he played Jack Reacher, people were like, how is this four foot two lawn gnome kicking the shit out of 10 guys? <laughs> can you do a Tom, Tom Cruise? Not really. I can only sort of do like the, um, all right, you know, the Scientology thing where he goes, oh, uh, yeah. you know. I can't do him in a movie like, because my voice is so low, but I'll be like. <laughs> yeah, it great. I, uh, I'm enjoying, you know, being here. He got the being, breathy stuff down, yeah. <laughs> being right here, you know. <laughs> is there a stunt you won't do, Tom? I, uh, yes, I won't be with a woman. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. Yeah. What about an alien? Well, I'll only be with aliens. Here, let me let me give you a couple. Let me give you a couple. Let's play a game I called like "What Turns like Tom this. On." Yeah. Ready? Hey, I'm gonna give you a couple. I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna be a woman hitting on you at a bar, and then I'm gonna be an alien hitting on you at a bar, and okay. we'll see which one you respond to best. Okay. Hey, um, is this seat taken? I uh, I don't believe so. Cool, cool. You don't mind if I rub my boobs on the table real quick, do you? Uh, Sorry, these double Ds just get in my way, and I'm just, I don't know, every now and then I just look to, I don't I, know, it's my first time outside in a while, so I'm struggling to connect with people. <laughs> Is this what girls do? I am. Um, will you please put on a bra? <laughs> oh, sorry. I know we're at a farm. <laughs> yeah. And I know. Yes, that- and there are so many animals here that need to get milked. Wink, wink, me, tits. I, I don't have time for I'm that. I'm Irish. <laughs> I don't have time for that right now. My hands are on two cocks, okay? And I am... I oh, am, roosters. I'm in ski school <laughs> right now. I am just going down the mountain. Yes, and... And turning... <laughs> going to turn this whole place into a snow globe in a second. Scene. And now I'm an alien. Be, oh, I... I, could, I didn't know... <laughs> I was gonna have the audience guess. <laughs> oh my god! That's why I didn't this say point, ma'am. At this point in the improv show, sixty people have walked out <laughs> to find out um, when the next show is, so they can bring yeah. a friend. <laughs> All right, now I'm an alien hitting on Tom Cruise at a bar. Okay. And then at the end of this, Tom, I want you to answer, which one turned you on more? Cool? Okay. Yeah. You got it. So that was our first experiment with Tom and a woman at a bar. Now here's the alien. I'd like to suck your holes. <laughs> we need to get out of here right now. I can have a helicopter here in five minutes, which I can pilot out. And all I ask is that you... <laughs> Let me fill you <laughs> with as much fluid <laughs> as I have. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> I think. <laughs> I think <laughs> it was close, uh, but I'm going to go with number two. Judges. Yep, Tom was more turned on. Oh, yeah, so we had some sort of a system hooked up to his car. I was just going to say, wait a minute, how did this, why are there, why are there jumper cables on my, um, why, am I, why are they on my cruise control? Oh, my God. Why are they on my stick shift? Wait, Cruise Control is a show that I truly wanted to pitch where it's Cruise, Tom Cruise watches people watch his movies on the back of plane seats and then flips out at them and then, or he has to try to not flip out. So it's you put him on a plane, and then you have a someone put on a movie next to him, and he has to like contain himself from like smacking the seat or flipping out and going. It's meant to be on a big screen. He's he's <laughs> got to be flying the plane. So it's will you, will he crash it or not? That's it, what it is. He'd rather kill people than have Top Gun viewed on the back of an airplane seat. He goes, yeah, that no joke. My cousin watched Avatar for the first time on an iPhone. Oh my god. And said, what about it? I didn't get it. He said, it w- this was the smallest film I've ever seen. <laughs> Dude, yeah, he goes, he goes, it wasn't that great. I was like, yeah, oh. you should have watched it on an Apple phone. But he I watched, mean, an, an Apple watch. But he watched Beethoven second on IMAX. Dude, he, he rented out the theater. <laughs> and he also made it like, an adoption for shelter <laughs> for St. Bernard's. Like, Dude, that dog is good. Dude, he can really play. Best dog actors of all time. Uh, Hooch and Turner and Hooch. Awesome. Um, wasn't even considering that. Bro. Um... Also, the chimp, doesn't he play hockey? 
in the, a, in a, there's a chimpanzee that plays hockey. I think it's Matthew um, LeBlanc. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Think about coming off of Friends. I was. And that's what they offer you. So or you, is that what you took first? Matt, you know how you don't need money right now? I know. Maybe that's what it was. Hopefully that money went to a chimp charity. <laughs> oh, my God. Chimp charity. <laughs> oh, my God. Who's. All right. Wait. Chimp charity. Jason Statham. Guys, so as you know, welcome to the auction for Chimp Charity. And every year we have a guest speaker. And this year we were surprised to find out that world-renowned global action superstar Jason Statham is a big fan of chimpanzees and has dom- donated $250 million to Chimp Charity this year. And he wants to explain why he gave the money and what he hopes it goes towards. Please welcome our guest speaker, Jason Statham. <laughs> Like Sorry, I, we we were gonna we we were told we don't have the sound effects for monkeys clapping, so I was told to do. Please don't cancel me, Jason Statham. Ladies, gentlemen, primates of all kinds, thank you for having me today. Here's a deal. I don't know how many of you know this, but there's a lot of chimpanzees in this world that are having their blood diamonds <laughs> smuggled up their back door pastrami. <laughs> And I'm just going to say this right now. we got to help out these chimp brothers. Mm. And I'm not monkeying around here. <laughs> I need you to go bananas and open your wallet and your hearts <laughs> to give to this incredibly worthwhile charity. I'm going to personally stand by the exit. <laughs> and I'm going to need you to pull up Venmo and your bank statements. Nobody's fucking leaving here. <laughs> Because I just attached my nipples to a car battery lock in crank. And I'm going to kick the shit out of anybody who doesn't donate like a lot of fucking money. Thank you so much, Jason. So you heard him, guys. Please do what you can because these animals... Look, our next speaker is dealing with a bigger issue. Every year, 1,400 kids are scarred emotionally from a gorilla jacking off onto a metal... Uh, it's a plastic glass at the zoo and their first time they've seen a a, a penis or a, a hot load an animal load is is from a gorilla at their local zoo and and we're so grateful we're so appreciative that Vince Vaughn has stepped up to donate money to make the glass thicker so that the kids can't smell the cum through the Shield, I'm paraphrasing what the issue is, but kids are scarred, and we want them to be able to go to the zoo and see their favorite creatures from stage and screen without getting a hot gorilla load shot to the face. Most of the kids, to be honest, don't even they're, they don't even flinch. I've been to so many zoos where a kid is up against the wall and a sticky cum shot, and the kids just go, and they don't even move, which to each his own, but... Anyway, I'm sorry. I'm rambling. Vince? I uh, Thank you so much for having me, Gary. I, re- I really appreciate it. And I, I, I tell, your, tell your wife thanks for the pie. Not that kind of pie, but the apple one. You get what I'm saying. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to say something right now, guys, that I think that we're all talking about right now, that the glass is not thick enough at the zoos. We need to make the, the glass as thick as the loads. <laughs> now the loads... Now, those loads are thick, baby. I'm saying right now they're like a baby penis in the kind of porn that I like to Google. You know what I'm talking about? And I'm going to say something right here. And the energy that I'm feeling from the room, I understand that you are gonna that you understand what I'm talking about. But those King Kongs got some, got some King Dongs. And I'm going to say something. We're not going to make them put those penises away because that's their freedom. That's the kind of journey that they're on right now. And I'm saying it's kind of boring in there. You ever hung out in a zoo before? I, had to, I got detained at a jail one time for about eight hours. You know how many times I beat off? <laughs> I lost count. And I'm saying, and you understand that the bars obviously didn't stop anything right now when we kind of threw that, kind of like hit the over. I was like putting a Jackson Pollock painting, but I'm just saying I was frustrated. I was on a lot of MDMA, which is like, a, it's a fighting drug. It's kind of in there. It's a part of MK Ultra, and not the Mortal Kombat thing, you know, the experiment. You know what I'm talking about. But I'm saying we got to protect these monkeys, and we got to protect these loads, because I am personally going to go around and collect these loads. I am putting out there, so if you have, I'm, I'm going to be hanging out with Statham in the back, and I'm going to have a bucket. And if you, if, if you know anybody who's affected by this and who wants the loads, I'm going to be just having them down there because I'm trying to build something special for everybody in the world. I think what Vince was tr- – so let me just clear this up. You're going to have buckets of grill- <laughs> hot grilled come at the, at the exit? Not unless somebody puts it in there. <laughs> They're empty buckets. I know there's a lot of gorillas here tonight, and I, and I I want you to be able to vet your frustration, which is what I call gorilla masturbation, to vet the frustration. Get that banana. Peel it off. 
Just go to town on it. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the hand on the cock. I'm also kind of a sound effects guy. So I'm like, that's what I'm saying. You Don't, know, I was you know t- what I call it down there? Gorilla glue. <laughs> I call that I call that eight butter. It's the only thing they don't sell at, health, at Whole Foods. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> this guy gets what I'm talking about. Nut butter. <laughs> the old nut butter. Thank you, Vince. <laughs> oh, my God. By the way, Vince Vaughn as a fuck working at a zoo. I mean, there's how many zoo movies have there been? Matt we, Damon bought a, we zoo. bought a zoo. We bought a zoo. It wasn't called Matt Damon bought a zoo. <laughs> that was the documentary. <laughs> Can you imagine, fu- what was that movie about? He bought a zoo with Scarlett Johansson, right? Yeah. And then they just... I auditioned for it. Awesome. For what part? I think it was for J.B. Smoove's part. What did he play? He played like the other guy in the movie. I, I would say, whenever I lose out to somebody, it's it's somebody who's not my type at all. Mm. I just auditioned for something, got like it was nice, and then they, it was somebody that it went to Michael Chiklis. <laughs> True story. Oh, my God. It was commish, too. <laughs> Something he'd already had a little hand in. Yeah, he might have. He had a paw in. <laughs> uh, but, at, there's yeah, We Bought a Zoo. Yeah. There's um, Zookeeper with, is that Kevin James? No, he, Here Comes the Boom was. Not about a zoo. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> that was MMA fighting. <laughs> no, wasn't that? Uh, there was Ke- Zoobly Zoo with uh, with Ben Vereen. Zoobly Zoo. Dude, so entertaining. Zoobly Zoo. Magic and fun. And Gorilla Glue. <laughs> And Gorilla Glue <laughs> is waiting for you. Is that what it was? For you. Gorilla it was, Glue yeah. is waiting for you. Wasn't it? Sh- it wasn't Sham Broest Lay. In, no, Lois Bram. <laughs> Don't you remember? There was yeah, like the, the Elephant Show. Sh- Sh- Sharon Lois and Bram. Yeah, that was the Elephant Show, or so, that was Zubli Zoo. No, Zubli Zoo was completely separate. Zubli Zoo. They were like they like, they looked like cats on Broadway. The Andrew Lloyd Webber. Oh yeah, and and, uh, and it was Ben Vereen. Yeah. What do they do? Uh, I mean, broad. Light and rainbows into our hearts. They painted and stuff. Yeah, you know, I don't even remember. And Sharon Lois and Bram were the Elephant Show. Yeah, and they would sing songs and stuff. Man, cornering the market on like kid comedy because we thought that was comedy for us, I guess, more or less, right? Right. Or like even um, Eureka's Castle. Eureka's Castle. Even Lamb Chop was like there was something, right? It was dude that horse. The the horse is so funny that Buck Two Horse is just like. <laughs> So funny. Did it say anything? I it, he, had, he he had sort of like I won't be able to do it, good, but he had like a he had like a, a sort of a draw. Oh yeah, what did he say? But his eyes were going <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, yeah. You know who was up for that part? Forrest Whitaker. <laughs> Forrest Whitaker. He goes, I'm gonna play. I don't want to play the horse. I want to play the horse. Forrest, we got you an audition for the horse on Eureka's Castle. No, no. I'd, uh, oh, Jubilee Zoo. Oh, he's like <laughs> It's, it's a multiverse. It, I'm everywhere. Either way, it's a fucked up horse. <laughs> he goes, listen, I'm not a puppet. Tell that guy to get his hand out my ass. <laughs> what about, um, uh, did you ever have at school, like, traveling entertainers? Like, there would be an assembly, and, like, yes. a, sci- a group from the science center would come, or yo-yo guys. Do you ever have yo-yo guys we come? Did. Or the belly dancers, when they would no. have a face painted on their stomach. What? They would have a giant top hat, and they would be dancing in this giant face, dude, they came right up to me like Gorilla Glue. We like, never had that. Dude, there was, by the way, I don't think the school hired them. <laughs> the they princi- came in a white van. The principal did, yeah. maybe. He was no, like, oh, guys, wrong address. Principal. Wrong address. <laughs> he goes, hold on, guys. I'll be right back. Let I- me go get the entertainment. <laughs> Birthmark looking like China over his nip. Wait a minute. It's Principal Martin. We had the Where's- yo-yo guys that would come through. Oh, sure. And they would, and it was also like, they were so hopped up on everything, and they were. I remember the guy came out being like, "I just got." First of all, they came out to like, "We got the beat, we got the beat," and then he came out, and they were like yo-yoing, and we all got on our feet because the principal was like, "Show some goddamn respect." And then these guys, that's my yo- brother-in-law. Yeah, and they would yo-yo around, and uh, and then what was the name of their group? Like Yo-Yo Fun or something. And then the guy would Yo-Yo just, Ma. Yeah, and, and there was a guy with the also. Doing and then that. he would cut the music, and he'd go. I just got one question for everybody. Who likes to yo-yo? And everybody was like, I mean, it's all right. You're f- it's fine. Yo-yo is the thing that when you see them done well, yeah. you're so excited. Enamored. But the moment that guy is gone, it's like it was men in black from your life. Yeah. 
Like, you, you get a yo-yo because then they try to sell you yo-yos after. Well, they gave us, like, shit yo-yos, and then I think it was like the guy would open his coat and be like, hey, <laughs> and you're like, you supposed to not be wearing a shirt? And he's like, oop, you're right, I, I brought him in a different bag. <laughs> Why is it connected to your cock? <laughs> and then they had, like, more expensive, like, colorful yo-yos, yo-yos with better strings. Light show? Yeah, the light yeah. shows, glow-in-the-dark ones. But they, oh, the but glow they would the do dark. Walk the Dog, which was really impressive, and then they did, uh, like, Around the World... It almost made me feel like, um, but there was no, even at that age, you're like, how are you making money from this? There's no way you're, you guys, you guys are splitting $500 and there's 16 of you. Today you're a Tic Tac account. Yeah. By the way, how do they come up with those names? I mean, I get Walk the Dog, but some of those names were like, it's the OJ Chase. And you're like, what? <laughs> Oh, with the tricks, you yeah, mean. The, with the tri- like the, yeah. Some of those we names- call this the Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah, like, what is it eating the other one? <laughs> Um, there was. We also had Jewish uh, jugglers, the Flying Karamazov brothers. Ever heard of them? Yes, but I never saw them. But I did. I have heard of them. <sighs> well, yeah. Ray one we kite zero. Kind of they didn't, we, we, we were in a we were in a one horse town. <laughs> they didn't come. You to had the horse from Eureka's Castle yeah. show up and do free, do <laughs> slam poetry. <laughs> He's from Lamb Chow. Oh. <laughs> if you get upset about that again, I'm gonna fucking ask you to leave. <laughs> God, this is secure. <laughs> No, so Eureka's much. Castle was a dragon and a princess. Oh, yeah, that's right. They didn't have a fucked up horse. No. <laughs> <laughs> nobody remembers where I'm from. No, but nobody <laughs> remembers what show I was on. Where's that guy's VH1? Where are they now? Oh, my They don't do God. those anymore, do Is they? Is it a petting zoo? <laughs> you own the petting zoo? No, I am the petting <laughs> zoo. <laughs> oh, my God. Slow kids are just feeding him <laughs> like a little... He's just like... Did you ever like those... <laughs> Did you ever like those petting zoos? I w- dude, Lamb's Farm was was by my my parents' house. I think every city had one, right? It was, but they because it was like the it was mini zoo. It was, but it was so sweet because they the the staff was mentally challenged people, mm. so they employed all of them. Oh, because the animals so were no sweet. risk and they could feed themselves. They were so sweet. Like even the goats were like, "Don't worry about it." The goats were like, "We're watching them." <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking care of them. <laughs> Barry, don't pick that. <laughs> Oh my god. That is the show, bro. They're taking care of the animals um, taking care of special needs kids, yeah. adults. <laughs> it was they were adults, but he was like, put on some pants. <laughs> oh my uh, god. But it was honest to God, it was like one of my fondest It's a puppet memories. show though. You have I'm sorry, you have you have puppets. You have people doing puppets, but then real real people with special needs. Uh, but but the an- yeah the animals- but it's a kid show yeah of course yeah yeah oh my god wait so the fa- the farm was called for you it was called what it was called Lamb's Farm wow yeah uh, I think we just had like yeah the yeah <laughs> I'm imagining all the adventures <laughs> the donkey's like <laughs> <laughs> he's like Charlie <laughs> don't eat that. That's all it is, is the animals. <laughs> oh, the the people mon- stop eating their food. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, oh fuck. Oh. Did you have a favorite one growing up? Um, Wait, and I'm not being funny. Like a person that worked there or like an animal? The animal. <laughs> I was like, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, actually, bo- I want an answer for both. Greg. Yeah. You couldn't tell what he was. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was the island of Dr. Moreau. He's a little bit both. Um, I love the I love um. Well, there's. Have you been to um the Gentle Barn that's here in California? I think my buddy used to DJ there. Yeah, he he still does. That's a strip club that's just waiting to happen. The The Gentle Barn. Oh my God! Yeah, get your cocks out. (laughs) I mean, you can throw food at the dancers. I mean, it's the Gentle Barn. First of all, it's the first strip club in a barn. Oh my God! And there's no. They don't want your money. They want your feed. <laughs> it's the feed and seed, sponsored by feed and seed. Oh, God. So the haze everywhere, so you can just jerk off. And the, just... the women are all dressed in those like animal tracksuits you can buy at Target. You ever bought one of those? No. You're probably better off. Turn, pull up. Your guy finds a photo. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh really? What's that? <laughs> Cut to the tape. <laughs> I hate this. Part. I have uh, to scrub my own vodka. <laughs> the uh, IG. 
Hey guys, Adam Ray here for the About Last Night podcast. Well, it's another new year. We made it 2023. We did it. Congratulations. Hug yourself. Touch yourself. So that when you ask yourself who touched you, you know who it was. You got goals, guys. Okay? And you want to achieve all of them. Every single one of them. And Factor is here to help you do that. So if you're looking to fuel up fast with ready-to-eat nutritionists, nutritionists, nutritious meals, yikes. You ever just forget how to read? Meals delivered straight to your door, um, then Factor's the place to go, okay? They, uh, they leave you time and energy to tackle everything else on your to-do list so you don't have to worry about where and what you're eating. Achieve and maintain your 2023 goals with Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat meal kit, and start saving time eating well and living your best life yet. If you love Factor, probably because you're too busy to cook and you don't like going to the grocery store and potentially, you know, um, running into somebody uh, from your past. And you want to skip the chopping, prepping, and cleaning up too. Well, Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes. And all you need is heat and, uh, and a positive attitude. So whether your lifestyle is keto, calorie smart, vegan, protein plus options are on the menu each week. They're prepared by chefs and approved diet- dietitians, not these unapproved dietitians. And each meal is all the ingredients that you need to feel satisfied all day long. 34 chef prepared dietitian approved weekly options are there for you. Plus, you can round out your meal and replenish your snack supply with an assortment of 36 plus sweets, smoothies, juices, and more satisfying add ons. Cut back on takeout and get factor instead. Okay, it's ready to make, ready to eat food in just two minutes. Eating vegan or veggie is a snap with factor. Each meal is prepared by the chefs that know what you want and they're excited to give it to you. So head to factormeals.com slash last night 50 and use promo code last night 50 to get 50% off your first box. That's insane. I didn't know that was the deal until I just read it. That's crazy. 50% off at factormeals.com slash last night 50 and you're going to get 50% off your first box. That's insane. So you got to do it. There's no better deal out there and no better food as well. Factor.com slash about last night. Oh wait, slash last night 50. Okay, do that. The, um, the zoo is a field trip. This is one thing I wanted to ask you, too. Do you remember? Does Seattle have great zoos? Oh, yeah. The Woodland Park Zoo is, yeah. like, not well, world-renowned, but but famous. I think definitely – I always um, equate how good a zoo is by, like, if they got animals that aren't that are outside the norm. They got giraffes. Awesome. They got hippos. How many cats do they have? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just a lot of house cats. Yeah. Just an old woman's home. <laughs> This is Bernice's zoo. This was the original Gentle Barn. <laughs> I, wait, you can pet all the pussy <laughs> for a price. <laughs> Whoa, pimping out puss. Um, wait, she has wh- Seth Rogen dressed as a goat to greet you on the way in and take your tickets. Just because he wants he wants the feed, though. He's like, eh, 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 some for me. Eh, 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 eh. He's well. The celebrity voices are the animals on the on our show about the mentally handicapped. Oh my! Come God. on, Gary. <laughs> oh, Gary. Yeah. Eh, 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 eh. Gary, we got to talk about this. It's a very special episode. <laughs> I think every episode is very special. That's what I mean. There's yeah. real dramatic music on every episode where somebody does something fucked up, you know, and the way like in Full House where like, you know, if Michelle, I don't know, said the N word, or I don't know. I forget what was happening. But, I'm with you. You don't have to move on. Or Michelle like- Said the N word. Or what, what, would, what would Michelle, what would be her hijinks? She you would, got like, it, N word. Yeah, Wait, she what? <laughs> I think she, Michelle would like- that's <laughs> what would she do? She would like because DJ was like That's DJ would be like you fucking cunt. like DJ was a teenager. Fool how, I pity the fool house. <laughs> I pity the fool house. You got it. Michelle Edward. said that to her one black on, friend. Yeah, yeah, come on, Mary Kate. Nash. Yeah, who was the? There was an actress that was her. Um, that was I think it wasn't Cherry from Punky Brewster, but there was a young black actress that was opposite Michelle. It was like her best friend. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, but I don't remember. She who, went on to have a pretty decent career. I remember the girl from Punky Brewster. But what would Michelle get in trouble for in Full House? Stephanie was like Stephanie was like St- Stephanie was kind of like I think she like meth yeah <laughs> and I think she like she wound st- up doing it. I think she did <clears throat> I think she stabbed someone with a pencil DJ what? like yeah it, on the show but like oh. DJ <laughs> <laughs> for meth DJ like what did DJ do drank beer maybe when she was yeah, like one a- of them, eighth but- grade but Michelle was like what was her what was her sit down like Michelle you can't do that moment. she was cutting. <laughs> They had to eat. They had to make it even. Her on stuffed the twins. animals. Oh god! Oh god! So it matched. Oh god! <laughs> she was dating a much older man. That feels on brand. Yeah, for Full House. So she's like eight. Sure, sure, sure. 
and uh, Weinstein makes a guest, special <laughs> guest star. God, they did have some pretty good cameos. That was always Amazing. exciting when you would see on a show when there was a crossover. He did the Mr. Woodchuck. <laughs> Joey, so great, so good. I fucking love that show. Yeah, I mean, but but you're right. There, a very our episode is always very special. So maybe, um, so what happens with the animals and the uh, Tyler, staff? who's one of the workers? By the way, Tyler was uh, had special needs at my high school. He he. This he, is not the guy from your. He roundhouse no, not from my at Albertsons. Tyler knew kung fu. Roundhouse kicked a security guard in the face. Got expelled. They expelled him. Oh. I, everyone was up in arms. Every, we, I'm surprised there wasn't a walkout or a walk-in Whoa. or a protest or a sit-down. How old was he? 40. He was still at school. He was like a super senior. Yeah, he was at, yeah. He was an adult. Can I tell you, this is like <clears throat> your version of uh, of Stand By Me, where there's four kids that are like 12 and one 40-year-old mentally handicapped guy who's like a part of the group he was a part of the school Bro, that would be an incredible he wore a leather jacket movie. and a wife beater every day he would he could Aww, dance to michael jackson when we sweet. when we took over the high school news program my buddy kirk and i and colin we uh <clears throat> you met colin i think at, at my wedding at your wedding yeah, yeah and uh and kirk and so he um we did a we we at one day he was like i want to be an SDNN, which is what we called it shortcrest uh, news network and so uh we were like all right we'll just I was like, how about if we just read some announcements and he was like i want and he had nunchucks he brought his own nunchucks to school which they finally told him he couldn't because he fucking he whiplashed some teacher by doing by trying way, to show he, a trick he thinks he's security oh he, oh yeah oh yeah he was always well he always hung out outside the security office so i think he was looking for danger <clears throat> and so he uh we were like how about if we just read some announcements and you can just do fucking nunchucks in the background sounded our intent was very like, dude, we're just hooking him up. He wants to nunchuck. We don't. It's harmless. Yeah, and we'll have we'll do that while we kind of like read an announcement. Like you're reading an announcement for like a school dance, and Tyler's behind you just nunchucking. We didn't we didn't anticipate it to come off as hilarious as it was, and it aired, and everybody was like, "This is fucked up." <laughs> we were like, "Oh shit!" I just thought we were hooking him up. Like truly, you're watching it back, and like imagine me just like reading like. School dance tonight at 9 p.m. And Tyler's just behind me going <laughs> oh, for about my God. six and a half minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we and we didn't, we <clears throat> I didn't see like the cut of it. So it just aired on Friday. And I remember in class watching being like, oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. This is, I hope people don't Who's aren't he mad. fighting? Exactly. No, he was just nunchucking. Yeah, that's what I mean. For six minutes straight, bro. And then sometimes he just look in the camera and he would do that. But again, it's like it was like Jim Carrey on Living Color when he would like do that sketch where sketch where he would like walk behind the newscast yep, I know exactly. and try to like you know dance or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, so where's man. that guy now? Uh, Tyler, oh, come on out. Oh my god, dude. See, and this is what I this is what we need a VH ones where they now high school past. Also, yeah, so that there should be a way to the way that Chris Hansen would track down, you know, um, you know, uh, future pedophiles. There's got to be a way to do that with like high school old classmates, where you can just like show up on their doorstep and like, can we just like do a to catch an alumni? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing here? I live here. Yeah, hey, it's John what are you been from high school? <laughs> what are you up to? <laughs> what are you been up to? Uh, yeah. uh, why are there cameras everywhere? Around oh here? my god! But, but you know you're gonna catch somebody doing some shit. Wow, to catch an alumni. To catch an alumni with Adam and Jonathan. Yeah, reminiscing. We went to two separate high schools. They're like, I don't recognize you. (laughs) No, he's my friend. We went to high school together. There is also a great show in going in full prosthetic and going back to like high school reunions and then just like taping it with a GoPro and maybe just like trying to like go up and reminisce with people and get them to remember shit that they don't remember and be like, remember when you fucking like, remember when we fucking fucked under the bleachers? And they're like in front of like a a girl's husband. She's like, what? What? And he's like, just starting shit at the reunion. I don't know. I'm, I I'm spitballing here. Girl, though, I love it. I her husband though. I guess it's more of like a prank no, show. It's yeah, funny if, like full like, prosthetic. You're at the reunion, but you're talking to a girl that you went to high school with. Yeah, but her husband's right here. Yeah, and you go and you and you like, hey, Sherry, Sherry, <laughs> see this guy? We fucked. <laughs> and she's like, wait, <laughs> did you even go to high school with us? Just yeah, you have to because there's always people that people don't remember that were there. Story? Yeah. <laughs> so my high school reunion is coming up, and I just got the notification. For awesome. It. Yeah. Oh so, man. And I didn't go to the last one because you and I were shooting a movie together in Arizona. The Bellman available now on Amazon or wherever great movies are being uh, held captive. Tubi, Quibi, Tubi, Quibi, Wibby, Quibi, Save Me, Ubi, Ubi, <laughs> My Spacey, which is just Kevin Spacey's personal VHS collection. <laughs> Wait, Kevin Spacey telling people to go see The Bellman on Amazon. Listen, there's 
if you like hotels the way I do for sec- for secret meetups with young boys, <laughs> no, promoting I, the Bellman. Oh, I prefer the Bell Boys, <laughs> the Bell Children, the Bell Boy Scouts. I'll help you build a fire. We just need to rub sticks together. The Bellman now available on Amazon. <laughs> Why would all the money go to him to promote the movie? <laughs> but we, I so I was I was supposed to go to the. I was supposed to go to the reunion, and then I was like, oh, shit, we, I, I was in Arizona with you. And um, in the last one, I, the first one I went to, and we didn't have, like, that big of a high school. I mean, we had a pretty large graduating class. I think mine was 1,800. What was yours? It was <clears throat> it was, it was large. I, I, I swear to God, I don't remember what it was, but it was pretty large. But I felt like maybe because I um, had a bunch of friends in a bunch of different circles, I feel like I knew everybody. And then when we went to the after party, after the we were everyone was hammered, we were going to go to this other spot, and there's a guy standing outside. And um, we're like, it's a, like you and me, and I'm like, oh, hey, what's up, man? He's like, hey, Dave. I go, hey, it's Jonathan. And I go, so did you, um, how do you know people here? And uh, And this girl, Lisa, came up to us and she's like, um, hey, what's up? You guys just hanging out? And I was like, oh, is this your girlfriend? And then she's like, no, it's it's Dave from high school. And I was like, what high school did you go to? And he's like, you're... and then she goes, he went to high school with us. But to be fair, he didn't recognize me either. And it was so crazy because she was like, I, I, and I have a damn good memory. I'd never seen this man before in my life. Holy shit. And we looked at each other and I was like, and I go, I mean, I, no disrespect either, either way. I'm like, I've never seen you before. In my life, and I knew everybody at the reunion, and we were all like, it was so cool. And this one dude, it felt like a prank show. Cause wow, it, that happened at my 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 ten year. What? And so this one's twenty twenty five. <clears throat> Are you gonna go? Yeah. Do you love those things? I mean, you're you're the most you're the best party favor I think I know. As far as like oh, yeah. being a great time, being fun, personable, can talk about anything. So you got you got all the checking all the boxes of a good hang. <clears throat> and then you know what you can do and know how much joy it brings to people. So I've told you this before. So that I'm sure you're going to have some friends, even some dickheads from the past that are just like, I saw, even if there's like, I saw this and they're like, and you're like, it'll fucking make their night if I give them a little walk, a little, something. You know what I'm saying? Like, or or say this about her. Hey, hey, what would happen if Chris Walken you know what's funny? named my wife's baby that's about to come out? If somebody doesn't bring it up, like, I feel like in that environment, I'll probably get pretty wild and fun, yeah. you know? Be, but I don't, I think that I- You don't I, go out, of, so you're not, you don't, you're just being, you're just hanging, but if people yeah, pimp you out Yeah, if the night little, goes on, yeah. and we have a couple beers in us, because I always, I always, maybe it's like imposter syndrome, but I always think, like, when I go into that situation, I never want to be, like, bigger than the situation itself, right. you know? But, but- like, at your wedding, yeah, it was. I mean, you're comfy. It couldn't have been a better time. Yeah, your wedding. It's like, and and it was. Like, you also got to have people, and I feel like, you know, I'm one of them that you're comfy enough, or that's setting you up. Like even in the Bellman, at the end, in the we're shooting the last scene of the movie, and remember, there's like I don't know, 150, 200 extras there, and, and the there was cameras just like, go off. Yeah, and the cameras go out, and I just start setting John up for like, just I mean. What what we've always done on the pod, and yeah. you just like annihilated, and like was just ripping this room apart, and it was like I knew that you were down to do that, and you also and 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 I was you know having a little banter with you, so it wasn't just like you know making you you know just throwing you to the fishes, but you got to have people like that that you feel well, comfy with. You're always with. so great at that, and I always feel like if somebody wants to do that, I'm always down because yeah. I love playing so much, especially right. with you. Right, but it's like. I never feel like I never want to like insert it if it's not being asked for. Right, right. I mean, I'm but I'm always down, and I do feel like I go into those environments like fucking ready for anything. Yeah, yeah. Like when I went to the the ten year, I remember we went in there, and I was just like, I remember conversations that I had with people, and I was meeting their spouses, and I went alone, and I just was like, and by the way, I'm thinking of wearing the same outfit that I wore to the ten year. What is it? Do you have a picture? Um. I have a. I'll show you after. What, what does the outfit look it's, like? It's a. It's like a powder pink jacket, and uh, and uh, a white shirt, and and um, and a pair of dress pants. Oh but, my fucking god! But I I think it looks pretty great, and I thought I would wear. So if anybody has pictures, like it's a, it'll be a subtle nod. Like nobody will remember. But when they but when they have them come up and they tag them in the same like uh, um, folder on Facebook, they'll just be like, "Does Kite not own a second outfit?" 
like how a cartoon character wears the same thing every day, <laughs> so that the only time they see me, they're like, he can't possibly remember what he wore uh, 15 years ago. Oh my! And I God. do remember. Who are you most excited to see? Um, 25 year reunion. I mean, this is now in the stage where it's like. People are gonna. There's gonna be severe hair loss. There's gonna be severe weight gain or loss. Oh, totally. Could be some People sexual look changes. Different. Well, there's so there's a group of guys that I spent the when we when we started to really. Oh, train. I thought you were about to say there are a group of guys that are all women now. There. By the way, what have you heard? <laughs> Can you imagine they made a pact at the 25 year? If if yeah. none of us are married. I was gonna say if none of us are comfortable. Wow. And how we were born. Wow. <laughs> by the 25th <laughs> yeah. reunion. Fuck. Yeah. There's a um, kid that went from uh, S- uh, Sam to Samantha, and a buddy at the reunion I remember asked because she had just taken, and uh, dear friend all through uh, high school, kind of lost touch, but still chat every now and then. Yeah. And I remember she sat down with us to tell a group of us like, I'm start taking estrogen. And I'm going to get the surgery. I got to go to like Denmark. <clears throat> you have to get take the estrogen and like I think get <clears throat> get boobs and pubes or. You gotta get something going to make sure you're okay with it. That and feels then like you a get... weird public access commercial. You want some boobs and pubes? <laughs> I'm Dr. Adam. <laughs> I used to be an injury a personal injury lawyer. <laughs> you're sitting in front of a library with books. Oh, oh God. Nothing about you says doctor. You just pull out a Merkin. <laughs> and a headshot of George J- Clooney from ER. <laughs> you wanna look like this? Me too. We can't do that here. What am I, God? Um I wish. I wish. Uh, you know, well, my you know my brother is trans. No way. Yeah. So my brother Where was that happen? born a, a female and then transitioned to a male, but like, n- like over twenty years ago. Wow. So everybody knew. So <clears throat> she was a, a gay teenager, was lesbian, and we knew very early on. And then one day, um, she was like, "Oh, I, I, I'm not a woman. I feel like a man, and so I'm going to transition." Can you still even say she was my sister, or is that like not? Uh, you just now you just you. I I have a whole stand up routine about it. Wow. Where about um, and uh, it's been pretty. Uh, it's interesting because I I do think that people because this is I I always say that my my brother's trans but has been before it was cool. Yeah. L A. Yeah. Um. But but truly like now it's interesting because if my I mean I think people remember that he was a girl mm. but 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 always looked like a boy. So when we would go out to, to lunch or dinner or whatever with my parents, they would always ask, the server would be like, and what do your sons want? What do the two boys want? Always looked like a boy. Wow. So it felt like such a natural transition, and my brother was just like, was like, oh, yeah, like I'm a guy. And we were like, yeah, probably. Wow. Even back then, we were like, yeah, that seems about Why? What out. gave it away or what was like? Uh, just because, uh, oh, never put the toilet seat back down. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> What a dick. Literally, we'll be right back. But not my career. Um, so, wait, real quick. Somebody did ask uh, my friend Sam, uh, uh, now Samantha, at the reunion, like, what'd you do with the wiener? Somebody just got real fucked up and asked that. She laughed it off and, like, made a whatever. And, like, I think said, like, I made a necklace out of it or something. I, I wanted her to be like, <laughs> <laughs> keychain. <laughs> She's like, if you rub it, it's a nightstick. Yeah, you're all getting protected. I me. made molds. You're all getting one on the way out. <laughs> <laughs> or the way that, in, depending on oh what you do with it. Oh my god, yeah. that what a but, party but favor! So awkward. Look I, at the bottom of your cracker jack. That's in my that's in my top five awkward life moments of all time. Whoa! Because it was just so like, <clears throat> not that she wasn't down to like be jokey with close friends about anything, but it was a, it all just felt like a weird thing to. It just was a weird thing to ask. I was gonna say what <clears throat> what was the what was the moment? And before? the person wasn't like a great friend of hers. Oh, it man. was just the person we went to school with. It was like, <laughs> hey. The cock. Yeah. So, so where is it? <laughs> like a detective. <laughs> Whoa! Everybody, don't move. There used to be a cock there. So weird. It's a scavenger hunt at your reunion. Oh God! Wait. So I want to come to this reunion in full prosthetic. In my reunion. Yeah. Done. Let's figure it out. Oh my God. Or we should try to come as. We should come as two people that are twins, and people are like we didn't go to school with twins. What, we both get in full prosthetic? Yeah, we both, both, both Would prosthetic. you do it? Yeah, you, that, but then you're just taking away your, oh, my God. We, if we could somehow get in touch with people to do a performance or a thing. I mean. Or get, a, or get like a weird roast thing. Like, and just, if, if everyone's wearing name tags, all you got to do is write a bunch of roast jokes and have them. And then just, you know, collect a bunch of names from the first, like, hour mixer of hanging. And then go up there and just do a bunch of real jokes that have nothing to do with anybody, but Dude, you have all the names. Or, or, or stuff that isn't true about them. Matt, remember Matt Glass? Remember Matt, how much you hate black people? 
<laughs> well, that's got to change yeah. now because uh, just calling people out. Yo, it's 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 it's, it's all in good fun. Yeah, but it's. But none of it's true and it's mean. Yeah. It's like a real t- uh, Tony Clifton, um, Andy uh, uh, Kaufman sort of yeah. situation. We're just in full face bladders. Oh, God. You know what's funny? Did you go to re- your reunion? I went to the 10-year. Uh, and I don't think we had, I think COVID screwed up the 20-year. Was there a performance of any kind? Because you always see it on TV, like The Simpsons or like whatever. I performed at my sister's 20-year oh, uh, yeah. about five years ago. And that was okay. There were some couple of people that were hammered. That were like that I had to call out, and, I, and one for one of this guy named Robbie Knowles, and he was like hammered, and it went fine. It was it to be fun, but but it was, I knew all of them because I my sister's only a couple years older, so I'd grown up with a lot of them, and but this guy was hammered, and I, and I had to at one better point better situation by the way that you were <coughs> the younger guy doing it, yes, not being going back and doing oh, oh no no no, no. I, I wouldn't do that, no, no, and no, I don't no. actually think I would do it again, and I would never do it on my own, but but they um. They, this guy, he was like leaning up against the thing, and all of a sudden I was calling him out, and I was like, I think I made a joke, like, hey, can we get Robbie another drink? You know, like, and he goes, ha ha! And then, like, was leaning up against the wall, and then at some point disappeared, and I was like, we should, I go, I go, I go, just so, in a mid joke, I was like, just so everybody knows, knows, Robbie has disappeared. I go, check the parking lot, check his car. Maybe check your wallets. Like, check. <laughs> I was like, definitely check the bar. <laughs> like, and then he came back. I was like, I heard you talk about me. <laughs> like, oh my! And it was an intimate God. little space, so it was like, how many people were there? Oh, maybe a couple hundred. Wow, is that yeah. funny? How many people? You said graduated sixteen hundred from your class. No, eighteen hundred was in my school. I'd say my graduate class was like six, five, six hundred. Mine, I maybe think three. Oh, maybe three. Actually. I've been thinking about it. I think mine was about six forty wow. or something like that. Like it was a pretty big, yeah, class. Yeah. But it's like, but the the reunions, it's it's like, mo- I mean, we didn't have 300 people at that reunion. Mm. I think there might have been like 200, though. And, and with the, spouses? Oh, yeah. That's where shit gets. That's that's what I would watch. I mean, I know there's been shows or I guess the after party, right? The Apple TV show is, but it's more of like a musical murder mystery, right? Like, But does it happen at a reunion? What? The after party. What? The after party of the show? Yeah. Uh yes, it's it's surround it starts That's cool. There. Yeah. That's cool. I don't know, there's just so much like just the idea of and I know there's been movies that have taken place at them, but it's like it is such a crazy thing to be a part of where you're like, I haven't seen like maybe a certain person in twenty years and you can hop right back into whatever is really crazy to me. Yeah. So I have a I don't know what that's called. That just I, yeah. Uh just chemistry camaraderie, but like you know what I'm saying? Like to truly like not even correspond through Facebook. There's people that you're just like gonna run into and go, "Oh yeah," and and twenty years of shit has happened, and you don't even maybe mention it. You just start do like just joking around in a bits. way, yeah. Or like we did that. One yeah. of my buddies became a cop, and uh, everyone and, has at least two people from their high school that became cops. So I know three. It one of the guys was the best guy, and the other guy was the worst guy. Oh yeah, the worst. And he did show up to the reunion. To let everyone know that he was a cop, and he was such a full piece uni of shit, dude. or what? How would he do it? Uh, he did it with his um. Is that a gun digging into my hip? Yeah, it is because I'm a cop. And it's and if your wife, if you're not careful, <laughs> hey, who's my plus one? Your wife. <laughs> that says boob inspector. Um, <laughs> I should come dressed as a cop. <clears throat> oh my! But God. it's a federal boob inspector. Uh, we get it. You won't yeah. get. You won't. You'll get. You'll get asked get to far. leave. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I will not get the. What's the opposite? Uh, far. Um, no. You've heard of Inspector Gadget? <laughs> Meet Inspector Snatch It. Hey, <laughs> go go yeah. <laughs> go go. <laughs> yeah, it's the theme. Go go extra fingers. You want to feel my brain? There's the name of the dog. Wait, who's the brain? Oh, the, <laughs> the dog? dog. Yeah, yeah. I'll leave. Inspect- <laughs> Inspector Gadget had a dog? No, Penny did. Oh, yeah. Penny had a dog named Brain. Yeah. Inspector Gadget, and there was Dr. Claw. Yeah, I'll get you next time. That's what I say as I'm leaving. That was one of my first impressions. Dude. Well, just that I mimicked. I'll get you, Gadget, next time. Yeah, dude. Bum, 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 bum. Ooh, ooh. Bum, bum, bum. Great theme song. Who wrote that? Do we know? Uh, John Tesh? Like yeah. It's just him going. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Have you seen that video? We talked about talked this on about like the, the first box. episode ever. Yeah. YouTube right now, John Kite, Adam Ray, Brad Williams, John Tesh. Mary fuck, kill fuck. Uh yeah, the origin story of him coming up with that song. The voice note he leaves himself. What if he's doing with the Inspector Gadget theme song? How would 
hit me in a public wait, place. Wait, here's wait. Let's hear, <laughs> let's hear, uh, Christopher Walken leave, uh, coming up with the idea for the Inspector Gadget theme song and leaving himself a voice note. So, there's a character that I've been working on. He's an inspector, but we're not sure what agency he <laughs> works for. He's more freelance. Mm. Like someone you might find on a Craigslist. A crime, crime dog McGruff. He doesn't have a dog, but his well, niece, Crime dog McGruff was a dog. His niece is, there's a dog. Hold on. <laughs> it's a girl's in it, too. Okay. And he has a, there's a guy who's the bad guy who's just an arm. And the song, hold on. Let me get my, let me record this. To do whoa whoa. Inspect the gadget. Wow. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Wait now. I got a hit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, great album of these celebrities coming up with the theme with the theme songs. Here's Jeff Bridges. Now that's what I call theme song creation. Tw- volume six. Jeff Bridges doing the Rescue Rangers theme song. Chip, 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 chip and Dales. <laughs> Rescue Rangers. Chip, 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 chip and Dales. I did the DuckTales one last time. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, uh, wait. Uh, fucking Barack Obama doing a, uh, 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 oh. I want to get these words right. <laughs> What's a fucking uh, the Price is Right jingle? Uh, all right, I'll get out of the booth. <laughs> He's still in there. I just, I just didn't know if you needed a second take. Wait, Barack doing the Price is Right jingle? You know how it goes? No. Tony Danza. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, uh, Barack Obama! Wait, Ducktales. Wait, the Ducktales uh, theme. Yeah, I'll pull it up too, and I'll sing it with you as Doctor Phil, and you do it as Obama. Uh, Ducktales lyrics. Lyrics. Uh, here we go. <laughs> you take the first part. I'll take the second uh, part. Life is like a hurricane here in uh, Duckburg. Uh, race cars, uh, lasers. Airplanes, uh, it's duck blur. Might uh, solve a mystery or uh, rewrite uh, history. Ducktales, woo. Every day they're out here uh, <laughs> making uh, ducktales, woo hoo. Uh, tales of uh, daring do, uh, bad and good, uh, luck tales. The, the, the danger lurks behind you. There's a stranger out to find you. Who touched you? Just grab onto some ducktails woo woo. Every day they're out here making ducktails woo. Tales of Darren do bad and good. Ducktails woo. Not ponytails or cottontails. Don't cancel me. No ducktails woo woo. Who touched you? We'll be right back. <laughs> Dude, I was thinking the, 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 the perfect strangers one. How did that one go? Um, uh, um, standing tall on the wings oh. of our dreams, oh. rise and fall. Uh, wait, no, what was it? Um, uh, uh, How about Vince Vaughn doing the Golden Girls theme song? I um, uh, thank you for being a friend. I down the road and back again. <laughs> <laughs> Life is true. You're a pal. You're a confidant. <laughs> and let me just say this right now. If I threw a party and invited everyone I knew, there would be a card. Wait, was, uh, 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 wait what? There would be... Uh, something addressed to me. Thank you uh, for being a friend. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that would be unreal. What uh, now? That's what I call uh, uh, theme songs. This feels celebrities. like another great animated sketch that we could oh, do. Like, or, or just even, yeah, or even. Um, oh, that's really funny. Yeah, or them just doing the jingles too. Or, or even, but family matters. Mm. Kachum, kachum, right? Yeah, kachum, kachum. <laughs> He's I, I do. My, he does the. He does. Uh, he just does the musical instrument. Well, I would, well kachum, kachum. 
<laughs> it is. Chris, we're walking to an ADR. How about this for a porn already? Yeah. All right, Chris. So the uh, we got to wrap this up real quick. We just need uh, there's just six noises. First of all, we need the door opening and the pizza guy taking the pizza out of the box. So you're gonna do the door opening and then the pizza getting taken out of the box. Tell me when. Action. Creek. Well, uh, open. No, don't just say it. You need to do the noise of a door. Oof. Okay. <laughs> And now the pizza is getting taken out of the box. Oh, oh! Let me go again. Oh, great! And now I need the sound of the guy unzipping his pants. Zip. <laughs> and now his his penis comes out of the out of his pants. Boy, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and now the girl is very surprised at what she sees. She didn't expect it to look like that. Wow. <laughs> You got the job, Chris. John Kite. What job? <laughs> <laughs> the podcast, the new podcast is Kite Club. Every dro- New episodes drop Thursday. every Thursday. every Thursday. You got to come on. I would love to. You got to. Uh, it's about time you got a pod. Dude, You're a beast. Uh, tour dates at John Kite. JonathanKiteComedy.com and then uh, Jonathan Kite on all the socials. You're a beast. I love you. Record setting. I think we're in the. Uh, we might be into the twenties now. I'm gonna have to look up and I'll put it in the uh, intro. Wow. How many appearances does this be? Damn. Uh, wait, wait. W- all right, walking. We need one more. Close us out. There's another. A second man has entered into the into the uh, apartment and his pants have now come down too, releasing another uh, wiener into the room. Oof. Well, hold on. I'm gonna go again. A wooga. <laughs> like a clown horn. A wooga. And then she goes. Well, she's squirting, so keep in mind, we need the sound of a woman squirting. Splish, splash. Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>